All right, my name is John Chen. You are now in the Business Resource Open House, and today we have the business of food. I'm the CEO of GeoTeaming and the author of Engaging Virtual Meetings, and I'd love to introduce my other co-host today, Angela Castaneda. Angela, how are you this morning? Morning, welcome everyone, Angela Castaneda. Um, I'm here representing Beacon Business Alliance and Rainer Ave Business Coalition in hosting this event. John, we also have a co-host with us, Jay Lyman. Excellent, Jay. Good morning, how are you? 
Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm, I'm excited for this event. Uh, Business Resource Open House is a program that um, is uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, so I'm excited to, to see us uh, going in this direction and embracing food businesses today. Excellent. Thank you, Jay. Jay's, of course, one of our co-sponsors here with the Seattle Public Library. I'm glad we're excited, especially now within light of all the recent announcements, really want to help our restaurants. So Jay will be in and out throughout the day, giving his great color comedy, uh, uh, comedy commentary. Excellent. Back to you, Angela. And, com and, and comedy, John. <laughs> you know, the Business Resource Open House really is specifically trying to make a safe space right now in the pandemic for small business owners, uh, advocate, small business advocates and experts to come together um, in this virtual space. We have the, as we'll show you in a little bit, we have a, an amazing language uh, translation component that feature that we're um, running today. And, you know, I feel like hyper local means something different today in, in these times. And so we're kind of going to dig into that a little bit. Um, a quote that I heard recently, I just want to share with you, food insecurity comes from a lack of justice and understanding. Oh. I wrote down the person who said that, Gary, but I don't know the last name. I just wanted to bring it back here to set the stage. Today is about content. Um, I mean, connection over content. So let's see what we can do here in this virtual space. Excellent, thank you, Angela. And this program is special. This is the uh, Business Resource Open House. This is our third version. And this is one of the first uh, Zooms that I've worked on that is quad language, four language interpreted. And so if you are in the audience uh, or you know other people too, this will, uh, uh, you can actually change the language to hear it inside of your native language. So I'm gonna introduce each of our interpreters and for those who are listening, uh, each of these four streams are being recorded today. We'll be able to give all four language streams uh, later today here on the business resource page. Uh, I would like to invite Lillian to come in, and Lillian is our Chinese interpreter. Lillian, I would love to give a greeting and, of course, tell our guests how to change the interpretation to Chinese. Um, you got to make sure and come to the English channel now, Lillian, and give this and then go back to the Chinese channel. Thank you. Oh, I have to change to the English channel. Ah, uh, Thank you so much, Lillian. Uh, we are also translating into Vietnamese. I'd love to bring up Levin Tran. She is our uh, Vietnamese interpreter. And again, uh, Levin, if you could greet our guests as well as tell them how to turn on the Vietnamese uh, interpretation. Remember and turn your camera on, Levin. There you go. And then make sure you're on the English channel with us for this announcement, Levin. Excellent, thank you. And for our guests who are in the attendee part, thank you, Levin. If you change to um, none on the interpretation to the English channel, you can actually hear our interpreters when they are on the English channel. Uh, if you wanna experiment with this too, you can actually change to any of the other three channels, Chinese, Vietnamese, or Spanish, and uh, you can listen to that live interpretation. Uh, meanwhile, we have one, th uh, one more interpreter. Uh, Iris is our Spanish interpreter. Hello, Iris. Excellent. 
Gracias, Aris. Thank you so much. Again, you can go to the interpretation, choose any of the four languages if you want to listen to this. And most importantly, if you have a friend who only speaks any of these other languages, please tell them to join now so they can actually listen to this program live. You know, my favorite story, Angela, from Bro One in doing this was, was a Spanish speaking woman came in and started saying something in our after hours, and then she started crying. And we were like, uh, what's going to happen? So we were waiting for Iris to interpret and that she said that uh, she had a preschool business that was completely devastated by COVID. Uh, but then four of the panelists and the guests jumped in and say, we will meet you and help you. And that's really what we're trying to do here. Business resources. If your business needs help, please stay here. You have some great resources that you want to learn from. Uh, speaking of great resources, we also have a graphic illustrator with us. We have uh, Mari Shibua. She is with us, and she will uh, be creating graphic recording uh, throughout the day. Uh, good. And there, here's her camera now. And so she will actually be uh, creating a recording, which we will also put inside of this. Uh, Maria, do you want to come off and mute for just a second and just say hello if you have a minute? Absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mari Shibuya, and she, they pronouns, I'll be providing a visual map of the conversation today. So in addition to these different interpretations, we also have the visual language present. It's an honor to be here. And Mari, for those who are not familiar with graphic recording, what's the value of getting this graphic recording at the end of this program? Ah, I love that you asked that, John. Um, we are visual, nonlinear thinkers. And so the idea about graphic recording is to get the information and the essence of some of the ideas shared today and put visuals to it so it enables our brain to access more creativity and how we retain and apply this information in our lives. So you, what I love to do with graphic recording is print this out. It will be uh, put into the chat later on uh, and then print this out and leave it up and you will uh, continue to get the value from this pro program afterwards, looking at those things going, oh, I should do, I should do this today and I should do this day. So excellent. Thank you, Mario. We're going to keep your camera on. Go ahead and set it up for graphic recording. And I believe now I'm going to hand it over to you, Angela, and tell us about the goals and the overview of today. Today we are, are gonna run through three different topics. Each topic has a speaker that will give us some, present some tips and tricks, trends today, what's happening today in the, in the what we're learning about for during the pandemic, how, pe how small businesses are being impacted and some silver linings possibly through some of these great ideas that are being that are standing up through the work of our small business advocates and our small business owners. So once we go through those three topics, we'll go to an open house environment. Everybody will be together, promoted to the same space, um, interpreters as well with those that are they are interpreting too, so everybody together and we'll um, continue and be able to ask those questions. During the whole time, the chat is our biggest tool. So uh, I think we're gonna try to uh, do a little exercise right now, right, John? Exactly, so for those who are in the audience, thank you for joining us. Hey, Shelton, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, how are you, Angela? Hello, John. Fantastic. Shay, Shelton, speaking of which, we're going to do the chat thing. You're going to help me out, Shelton. Uh, so we're just going to have everybody chat. Where are you calling in from and what's your business? Hey, Shelton, where are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from Linwood, Washington, uh, right on my balcony. <laughs> and uh, my name is, and I'm, um, it's a Southwest Ball PNS is the name of the company. Excellent. Thank you so much. Shelton, we're going to have you turn your camera off until you come back yes. on. Yes, sure. We'll do Excellent. Everybody else who's in here, all the panelists, please, and attendees, please, everyone, chat where you're calling in from and your business. So, for instance, I'm calling in from the amazing Shoreline, Washington, and I have a new brand new website called engagingvirtualmeetings.com. I know uh, Angela also has her website. Of course, the business resource website, too, uh, that she represents is an important one. Excellent. Let's see. We have uh, Darby from Seattle, Washington. She's downtown today. Excellent. Again, if everyone else can chat, especially all my panelists and attendees, take a moment to chat. Brian's calling in from Humble Pie and the Gohan Station. 
Uh, I love humble pie. That's such a great. Uh, uh, St- uh, Stacia is calling in from the Seattle Com- uh, Commissary Kitchen. Jay Lyman, of course, is calling in from the Seattle Public Library. Roberto is, uh, uh, hola, of course, thank you so much, calling from the Pioneer Square, downtown Seattle. Thank you for all those chats. Now, the other place that you can also do with these chats, uh, I love it too, Bob is saying hi to Brian. Yeah, the chat is the side conversation that you can't have, right? You can't talk while Angela and I or the panelists are talking. You will talk at the same volume that we are. And use the chat to keep the conversation going. Ask questions, right? Ask uh, resources, make comments. If you have a valuable resource for another restaurant, please put it here. That would really be valuable. I'm also going to ask uh, now here too, if you have any questions, what questions uh, do you have about the business of food? And those who are tuning in, I know we actually have a collection of people on live stream. Feel free to chat your questions here on Facebook Live. We're going to keep track of all of them and answer as many as we can. We also know the business of food is not just the business in Seattle, that uh, people can call in from all over around the world, and that uh, many of the principles and things that we're talking about apply here too. So there we go. Those are the chat that we have. Uh, And now, Angela, I'm going to leave it to you to introduce our first lightning talk. Excellent. Well, I am... I am excited to introduce um, our first lightning talk, Mariah De Leo is, the, is our speaker, Good Food Network. I, don't even, I can't even go through the list. There's so many things happening, so many things on Mariah's plate. I just attended a, a seminar that Mariah um, hosted and uh, just really amazing resources available. So the one point I want to make before I give it to you, Mariah, is that I feel like today we're bringing together um, a lot of people that are already doing work in their areas. The business of food really is this theme today, but small businesses are suffering across the board. So, So these tips and tricks should apply across the board to and um, I think Mariah's uh, got a treasure trove here for us. Welcome, Mariah. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I'm excited about all the panelists today. This is a really amazing lineup of people, um, resources, and of course, just most of the resources coming from the community, um, which is what we've discovered. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what comes of the discussion. Um, I joined Seattle Good Business Network in April. Uh, with the intention of starting this good food economy program. It was a little bit differently named then. And our purpose was to connect local producers with um, end buyers. So retailers and restaurants, um, all the way you know, to the people who are just eating the food. And we had a number of things kind of lined up, um, but obviously that was right when the restrictions um, uh, hit. And so we, pri- we ourselves pivoted pretty quickly. Um, and most of these programs or quite a few of these programs um, that you see on the screen are kind of an evolution of um, us responding to what we saw as the needs of the small businesses that we represent and small businesses all over the city and the region. Um, we started with a Good Food Forum, which was, um, Basically, it's an online community where anybody working in food in the Puget Sound region can come and do resource and market matchmaking. So someone can come and say, I need a commercial kitchen and someone else can come and say, I've got one for you um, and do those kinds of things. And again, that was to kind of bridge this local food pipeline, um, the original purpose, but it's also been a really great kind of urgent matchmaking resource um, during kind of COVID times. Um, One of the things that came out of that was, um, you know, we had seen that there were a number of resources coming out about restaurants in particular um, with the stay at home orders. And obviously it's really, um, it's really appropriate and relevant now. Uh, But one thing that was there was uh, takeout and delivery. Um, and those were for prepared hot foods. Um, but one thing that we saw were a lot of restaurants were pivoting um, to basically all sorts of other ways, restaurant pantries, prepare at home meals, meal kits, um, you know, kind of partially prepared uh, cooking classes, experiences, and those kinds of things, as well as community kitchens. So we created a map um, called Restaurants at Home, and I'm just going to take a quick second in the chat to 
make sure you have those links there so you can kind of come along with me. Um, but inside the re restaurants at home, it was basically to highlight all of those restaurants and direct people to them. So you can search through all of the different ways that people are pivoting. Um, on the slide, if you go to the next slide, I think it's the next one. Um, yeah, here it is. You'll get a sense of kind of what it looks like. Um, here on the right, you'll see a dough, which is probably one of the um, the really great kind of models for this, um, Chef Eric Rivera has done over 200 different programs um, since basically since March. And so you can see that you can get pantry items and butcher items. Um, he's created like a Puerto Rican pantry. Um, so you can get spices and staples as well as meats coming in from local producers. Um, again, meal kits and ready to heat um, foods. Uh, we love for, like I said, it's really relevant right now. So more restaurants that can kind of come in. Um, if you follow kind of the link that I put in the chat all the way through, you can add your own restaurant. Um, you just fill out a survey and then we'll add it to the map. Um, and then, you know, we'll change as it's, as we see. Um, but one of the other big ways that people have been pivoting is community kitchens. Um, we saw that, of course, with um, the Seattle Community Kitchen Collective, um, with chef, you know, led by chef uh, Melissa Miranda at Musang, also chef Christy Brown at That Brown Girl Cooks, chef Tarek Abdullah of uh, Feed the People, um, and and others, and we were really inspired by that and inspired by people like at World Central Kitchen um, who were basically feeding their community. Um, and most of them were doing it by donations um, and out of their own pocket. And uh, this is an amazing resource that they were providing to us. Um, and we thought based on the World Central Kitchen model, it would be really helpful if they were paid. Um, support those restaurants that are really um, struggling um, because they are, they're one of the hardest hits, um, you know, businesses uh, that are affected by this pandemic. And so uh, we created Good Food Kitchens and Good Food Kitchens um, is basically a, um, a program where we provide funding to those restaurants who are doing community kitchen work. Um, we've started a pilot program where we have five restaurants. Those include Chef Christy, Chef Melissa, and Chef Tarek, as well as um, Chef Eduardo Jordan of um, Solare, June Baby, and Lucinda Grain Bar, and, um, uh, and Project Feast, which is based out in Kent, um, which is an amazing resource uh, a refugee and immigrant incubator there. Um, and they're also doing community kitchen work. So we're starting by fundraising for them um, and basically paying them to help pay our community. We think that there's a lot of legs in this model and um, we're really looking forward to ramping up funding. And as we ramp up funding, um, we wanna then of course extend this to other restaurants. So if you follow the link tree kind of um, through and you're a restaurant who's interested in this, you can sign up to be a restaurant. So as we expand, um, we can bring you on board. Um, if you're a community organization, you're feeding people, you can sign up as well. And so we can help um, match you with different restaurants. Um, one of the fundraising campaigns that we've done is uh, Give a Meal, which is going on in concert with Seattle Restaurant Week, which we also run. Um, so that's basically a way that people can just go ahead and, and donate $10 and you, as little as $10, as much as you'd like. Um, and, and that will go to feed someone in need. Um, but that's part of our kind of reimagined restaurant, Seattle Restaurant Week understanding that we need to support restaurants, but that the model wasn't really serving the restaurants um, as well as it could have. Um, we made some changes. We made it a month long so that uh, you could get out there as much as possible. This is the last week. So, you know, get out there and support as much as you can. Um, we took away all fees, all participation fees, uh, which was a huge barrier. Um, and, you know, it paid for what we needed to, to get you know, the media coverage and things like that. But, um, you know, we'll look at finding ways to keep this because it really made it accessible to so many others. And then finally, we just kind of made also the model a little open. It was, you know, a three course meal for $35 for dinner or three courses for lunch for $20. And instead we just said, you know, those are the, the price points, you know, offer whatever you'd like. Um, so we had seen some really creative stuff out of that. One of the great things that we did um, by kind of opening up uh, Seattle Restaurant Week was to partner with Plate of Nations. Um, and Sarah is here and going to be speaking um, a little bit later. I'm going to introduce her. And so I'm excited to hear more about um, on their end how that came about. Um, but um, I think there's a screen. Um, if uh, you go through the slide, um, there's a shot of, um, sorry, there's the give a meal. There's all our great chefs. 
and then on the next one shows you um, that you can base there are all of these great South Seattle um, restaurants that uh, are partnering with us for Seattle Restaurant Week, and you can support them through the end of the uh, just one more week uh, on that. Um, and finally, before I just uh, jump off, that's uh, kind of a lot about most of what we're doing right now. Um, the other one is our Eat Local Support Hub. So that's something we've actually started since the very beginning. Um, and we have a business support hub on um, Seattle uh, Good Business Network's uh, website, seattlegood.org. Um, and it's got a number of rest of these resources that you're probably going to see from a lot of these other panelists today. We're trying to, um, you know, be a resource for all of you as so many other organizations are, but one of them um, is our Eat Local page. Um, and that gives you those takeout and delivery um, uh, resources and directories. I saw Laura Cleese's uh, intentionalist uh, in the chat box um, that's been updated um, was one of the first resources. So you can find that there too. Um, also farm direct and home delivery services. So with, with retailers, you know, really, um, you know, struggling with a lot of demand and especially um, with reduced capacity and vulnerable people not necessarily being able to um, come in and shop at restaurants. There's a lot of great new home delivery services that are around. Um, and so I invite you to check that out, um, really connecting local producers um, to all of our eaters uh, in the community. Um, and I think that's it for the most part, but just check out all those links um, and, uh, let me know if you have any questions about any of them. Um, but with all that, I want to turn um, the uh, basically turn the mic over. Uh, we have a couple of panelists on this talk, um, including I think I'll start with Sarah because I had mentioned Plate of Nations, um, and uh, yeah, if we could switch over. And then uh, Sarah, go ahead and turn on your camera. I believe Sarah is actually not with us right now. Hold on one second. Make sure she's. Oh, okay. let me bring Sarah up. Hold on one, please. And then I'll bring her slide deck up. Sarah, now can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> I've been listening all along and really appreciate Mariah's um, introduction. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see. I. We'll do a bit more of an intro of, um, let's see, I think what we're looking at right now is the Essential Southeast Seattle um, slide deck here, but let me talk a little bit um, about Plate of Nations and um, the organization I work for. So I'm Sarah Valenta, I'm the Community Business Development Manager for Homesite. We support the MLK Business Association and one of our major um, events, our signature event actually, uh, with the MLK BA is the Plate of Nations, and it was designed to collectively promote independently owned restaurants in the MLK community. Um, as you all know, immigrants from around the world settle um, in Southeast Seattle and the Rainier Valley and start businesses that provide cultural favorites um, and just create an environment of um, home and a community in our area. Um, and we started this uh, event, the Plate of Nations, to embrace that, um, to support the um, restaurants in our area and to um, share it with the rest of the city because I think that we are a, um, a, a bit of a secret, <laughs> unfortunately, um, in Seattle. Uh, so we're trying to get our um, name out there a little bit more and bring in um, more dollars for our businesses so that they could stay afloat. Um, and very excitingly, I think it was actually um, Angela that initiated growing the Plate of Nations from just the MLK community and neighborhood in Southeast Seattle to be all of Southeast Seattle, including Mount Baker, Beacon Hill, Rainier Beach. So we spread it um, throughout the valley and um, up into Beacon Hill, which is very exciting. And so we've been doing that for about three years. And um, the the I guess the two things that really make our event, our food event a little bit different is that it's a community building event as well as a support your um, local business event. Um, so our initial outreach attempt was 
for the businesses to create a plate of food that um, can be shared among you know, your family and friends and it brings people together as well as it being an event that gets people to know the businesses more. So, um, but we were even, of course, when COVID happened, we had to pivot away from that and went more towards um, selling gift cards and getting people to do takeout and helping the businesses that we serve um, get online, claim their Yelp page, claim their Google page so that they can uh, address and talk to the community better than they were um, without having those pages claimed. So, and then of course we had to, like I said, pivot away from doing that um, in March, because that's when it, we usually have it. I think the week before Seattle Restaurant Week normally does their event. And I was contacted this summer by Seattle Restaurant Week to see if um, the Plate of Nations wanted to partner. And we were thrilled about it. And still our, our businesses are getting um, customers from all over the city, which is super exciting and not just locally. Um, so we've been very grateful to be part of that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, we're excited to have you. I can't wait to see, you know, hear more about um, how it's been going, but um, we've definitely got a lot of coverage and um, yeah, I'm excited to see how, hear how it went actually from the restaurants themselves. Um, before we jump over, I think we might be a little bit over our, um, coming to the close of our 15 minutes, but I want to give a good um, amount of time. Um, sorry, that was my bad. Uh, I probably was, should have gone with <laughs> five myself, but I want to give at least two minutes to um, Chef Logan Niles, who um, runs Pot Pie Factory uh, and has been doing an amazing amount of work. Um, obviously, her model is, is um, of home delivery is really, um, really created for this moment. And so I just want to hear more about uh, how things have been going for you. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, surprisingly, this has been uh, our best year to date. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, we weren't expecting a pandemic. We um, had a, a confluence of great opportunities in February. We were featured in the Seattle Times with an amazing review, which really kicked things off for us. But then um, the, the cross between COVID and that actually was a boost for us in terms of people having to stay at home, needing comfort food very, very desperately and um, are being able to provide a product that's pre-cooked and frozen. So it was easy to get to them. Um, people were stuck at home. So then they were just waiting for that delivery model to kick in for us, which worked out really well. So um, finding a great partner uh, for deliveries was important. Um, having uh, availability of products that met a lot of different dietary um, needs. Um, switching to halal proteins for us was really important so that we could be more inclusive to more households and more families, uh, making sure we had a vegan alternative, vegetarian alternatives, and just being there for the community and, and letting them know that we're, we're still here, we're still producing, even though we might be a little delayed on, on turning that food around. Unlike a restaurant, we don't do a la minute cooking. So there's a little bit of a lag time between when people place their orders and when their order arrives. But the community has been incredibly supportive of that. They understand that we went through an incredible amount of growth very quickly. Uh, and then they they really hung in for us. So it's it's been a nice partnership between our, our customers, our clients, and, um, and, and the, a growing business during a very difficult time. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Logan. I'm so glad to hear that out of all of this, that there are some businesses um, doing really great work um, and um, thriving throughout it. Um, I want to switch um, back to Sarah really quick. I think there's a slide deck um, that um, Angela was hoping to show about the um, Essential Seattle website. And then we're, we'll switch it back to Angela. Um, Sarah, did, was there anything you wanted to say about this specifically? I feel like you kind of did a little bit, but... Um, sorry, yes, I, I wasn't sure when we were going to talk about this, but um, we had the fortune to get together again with all of Southeast Seattle business district advocates to create the Essential Southeast Seattle directory. Um, and we're, we're to, to allow all the business, all the community members to know which businesses are open, what time, where, and what they're offering. And we have grown this, of course, to include all of the businesses in our districts as well as. Um, highlight and focus on 
um, building a e-commerce platform. We're working with a company called DEI to help our businesses either sell merchandise or, um, sorry, or, um, <laughs> or have to go orders through this platform. And it's really, really important right now that we, we keep using this word pivoting, but that we are able to adapt to um, the ever-changing <laughs> needs of COVID and um, how we're, we're trying to keep everybody safe and still in business. And this is one way that um, we have found that really is, is working. And we're super excited to get all of our Southeast Seattle businesses on an e-commerce platform. Awesome, that's that's so exciting. Uh, I'm excited to see this um, growth. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, so fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <the> time. <laughs> I know. Um, well, with that, yeah, we are past time. So I'm going to hand this back over to Angela. Uh, and thank you all for listening. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mariah and Angela. Yeah, you yeah, John, you can go if you had something to bring in right now, or should we just roll to uh, topic two? Let's roll on to topic two, our uh, technology in the time of Corona. Go ahead, Angela. So we have um, a speaker today that uh, is has um, CEO of Intentionalist. Laura Kleis has uh, has brought an amazing project to um, to bear. Working on this over the last years prior to uh, the pandemic, to um, to make sure that POC BIPOC small businesses are seen and heard and supported. So hyperlocal is, as I mentioned earlier in this, it, it feels different today. What, is it, what does that mean? We really have to use our virtual spaces to get in front of shoppers and, and, um, and be accessible. So I think Laura's doing an amazing thing and uh, happy to have her here today. Hi, Laura. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Laura. Thanks so much. I just want to give a reminder too to all of our speakers. If uh, I know our time is short, but I also know we have uh, three interpreters. So if you can really make your uh, words meaningful today, it will really help our interpreters. Thank you so much, Laura. Awesome. So, so speak fast and for a really long time is what I just heard. <laughs> Nailed it, Laura. And Laura, of course, knows multiple languages too. Um, so yeah, so as promised during our tech run through, I was super embarrassed. So hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Laura Kleiss. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the founder and CEO of Intentionalist. And before uh, we dive into the topic of building and leveraging your virtual presence, um, I wanted to follow up on a thread from our tech support, which was um, my just appreciating the fact that there is simultaneous interpretation happening in multiple languages. And I was super embarrassed because I was able to kind of leverage my deep love for ice cream and, and whip out um, yo quiero helado, chocolado. Um, what? Um, and then I got to the Vietnamese and I had nothing. Um, and so, hold on, I need to consult just my, I've been practicing um, and I appreciate your patience. Um, okay. Dui tit gurem chakola. How did I do? Was that okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna practice some more so that I never have to to hesitate again. Um, and if you love ice cream or chocolate ice cream the way that I love chocolate ice cream and want to support BIPOC ice cream shops, um, head to Intentionalist. We can uh, <laughs> make that easy for you. But really, what I wanted to do in the very limited time that I have um, is share just a little bit about Intentionalist a couple of the things that we have learned about the importance of virtual presence um, and digital communication. Um, and then we'll segue into some insights from our panelists. So I founded Intentionalist about two and a half years ago. I'm originally from Seattle. Um, I grew up here. 
uh, left for college and life uh, for about 19 years and then returned five years ago to a city that had changed just a little bit. And confronted by the tension between rapid growth um, and gentrification, displacement, and questions about who still has a place in our community, I wanted to do something about it and realized that there really is an opportunity for us as consumers to spend our money like it matters because it does. And that in a tech focused city like Seattle, where increasingly we swipe and click our way to immediate gratification, there was something missing. And what was missing was the opportunity to connect with and support and to build community through everyday decisions about where we eat, drink, and shop. And so when it comes to the question of accessibility online, um, which is where so many of us turn uh, for information about where we might spend our money, I found that there was a gap between my desire to support BIPOC businesses, and again, this is going back a few years, and the ease of finding information, not just about what was for sale, um, but about the people and stories behind the businesses that really are at the heart of our communities. Um, and so what I'd like to offer are three quick framing thoughts, and then we'll pivot to panel. Um, so the first thought um, that I, I'd love to share with you, especially if you're a small business owner, is to leverage the fact that when you are selling your product or service, it has to be about more than a transaction. I think that in, in the game of transaction, um, small businesses tend not to win. Um, and I would encourage you to recognize that increasingly consumers are looking for more than a transaction, especially uh, when we're looking at opportunities to patronize and support local businesses. And to that end, consider sharing a little bit about who you are and your story. I know that that can seem a little bit uncomfortable when perhaps for years you have been relying on the quality of your product or service to do the talking for you. And there's nothing wrong with taking pride um, in the work that you do, but increasingly people are looking for connection. And that's a real area of opportunity for you to differentiate who you are, why you do what you do, and connect with community in a different way. The second thing um, gets to the heart of this topic, which is about being accessible. We definitely live at a time where while folks are still out and about in community and may stop in um, to businesses on main streets throughout our neighborhoods, having a digital presence is increasingly important. Um, Logan mentioned uh, the importance of the Seattle Times story, um, which was rapidly shared online. And we have definitely uh, experienced traction for businesses that are a part of our network as well. So for example, uh, last week was Veterans Day and we highlighted uh, a veteran owned donut shop. Um, the owner is a man named uh, Davis Vincent um, and his business is Zuri Donuts. And we shared a little bit about Davis and his experience um, both as a veteran and as a baker via our social media channels, um, via our newsletter. And in response, community was excited to show up. Now you all know that there are many places, uh, delicious places to enjoy donuts throughout the greater Seattle area. 
But I think that what really piqued people's interest was the opportunity not just to eat a delicious donut, but to know that they were supporting a black owned, veteran owned small business. Um, so please keep that in mind. The third thing that I wanna reinforce is that relationships matter. Um, I think that we have all experienced that, uh, especially this year. Um, and what that means is that our connection to one another, the power of human connection can be a lifesaver for your business. And that means getting out from behind the counter, uh, perhaps virtually or digitally, and letting people know a little bit more about who you are and perhaps if you need some assistance. I think that we've seen really powerful examples of crowdfunding of businesses letting folks know that maybe they could use a hand. And that hand could be a financial contribution. That hand could be promotion via social media. Um, I think that small business owners are creative. You're resilient. You're hardworking. You are the epitome of grit. And sometimes that means that we don't ask for help. And yet I think that if, if we've learned anything this year, it's the importance of both asking for and offering help so that we can all make it through this year uh, as a community. Um, the, the last thing that I'll say before we pivot um, is there was discussion of some of the resources out there in terms of help connecting with your Facebook or Yelp or Google pages, uh, technical assistance um, in other forms, as well as some of the neighborhood e-commerce marketplaces. Those are all really important tools to be sure to take advantage of. Um, and I did also want to mention Intentionalist's gift certificate marketplace. Um, at the peak of COVID in the spring, we recognized especially that there were a lot of immigrant owned businesses like Nightlight Nail Salons. Um, there were new businesses coming online like Phnom Penh Noodle House. There were longtime community staples like Mila Kai who had these physical gift certificates but didn't have an easy way to sell them online. And so we created our gift certificate marketplace um, which is a zero commission way um, for us to make these and other physical gift certificates available um, through our website. And then we communicate with the business to share the order information via email, which can be a nice stepping stone uh, prior to investing in any sort of more complex uh, e-commerce infrastructure. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so enough from me. Um, I would love to bring our panelists into the conversation at this time. Um, and we're fortunate to have Jay Lyman, who you know, and also Shelton Style. Um, and would love if each of you could just briefly introduce yourselves and either refute everything that I've said um, and or share your own insights in terms of what you've learned about the importance and or tips when it comes to building and amplifying virtual presence. Why don't we start with Shelton? Hello, uh, my name is uh, Shelton Style. Um, I'm from Sanford, Florida. I, I've been here in Seattle now for three and a half years and um, started the business in 2018, Southwest Ball Peanuts. Um, just like you were saying, Laura, um, you know, we all bumped our heads at the beginning of this year when it came to uh, COVID. Um, so the key word we're using here is pivot. You know, we all had to pivot to some extent. And um, one of the things that I was doing pretty much was I was actually doing everything online at first. Um, you know, I, I, um, I actually did go out into I'm actually out in the public uh, and, and one of the things that I think people notice quite a bit is uh, making sure that you're following those co you know COVID 
COVID setups, you know, like if, if you're if you're gonna have, you, you know, make sure you, you're you're actually spacing, you know, actually maybe putting tape out six feet apart. People pay attention to those small little details. People, I, I, um, because when I when I got feed when I get feedback from uh, different customers, maybe they'll leave something on my Instagram page. Uh, typically, they will say like. Hey, come check out the peanuts. Um, he had the COVID, COVID setup and everything, you know. So people do not realize that, you know. So it's uh, very important to follow that. Um, the but I imagine that some of the uh, promotion has happened online as well. Yes, a lot of the promotion has happened online. Um, like around March, you know, around the COVID, that's when things kind of decreased. But around June, it increased, and um, and like you said, that's from people I think just sitting home, ready to buy, you know. Um, so I, I think on the technology side, I think it's um, just like you just like you said, Laura, the gift the gift cards, especially right now holiday season. You know, I mean that's a that's a wonderful opportunity. And another thing also that COVID nineteen has brought to us is um, mask. You see people, you know. Um, put a mask on their um, apparel, you know? So I would definitely suggest, you know, uh, if you don't have masks already represent your business, people are buying them, you know? Uh, uh, so I would suggest uh, mask. I would uh, suggest pretty much maybe, like you said, putting your uh, product on multiple platforms. You know, like for me, I know I have my website and people will go there, but it's um, we're definitely transitioning right now to you know, have have um, the the peanuts. You know, on multiple platforms. I think that's a key thing there to do. And absolutely, uh, Laura. Did, uh, one question. Uh, um, just one side question, I guess. Um, can you provide the uh, website and the chat panel for the uh, gift? The gift. Of the, of the certificate gift? marketplace. I will yes. do that as soon as our panel wraps. I'll jump okay, okay. into the cool, chat and explain how Sorry, I did put it in there already. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and then Jay, I would be remiss if we didn't tap into you for some additional <laughs> words of wisdom and insights. Happy, happy to talk. I mean, I, I, I feel like you hit the nail on the head with those three, like three things from my perspective. That's what I've been, you know, hearing from from people who are, um, who are. Uh, either trying to survive in their bit in business or really trying to launch a business right now um and or uh you know like logan growing the business right now too you know uh so um yeah yeah i would say you know that uh that yeah so relationships matter like that that piece i think is ties into to my world of um you know the work work i do at the library and i'll just touch really briefly on that um which is you know uh, myself and my nine amazing colleagues, um, we help people with market research um, for free, and um, and we uh, and we in in the in that uh, in that uh, opportunity to create relationships with people who are starting or growing businesses um, like Shelton uh, and others here uh, on these panels. Um, you know, we we're hearing some of these needs, and we're hearing you know what what people are um, what skills they might need to kind of uh, to reach those customers or to like develop those relationships and be accessible and things. Uh, and so that's that's what I've been doing during um, during this pandemic is listening for those needs and then responding um, with uh, programs or services or things that that um, that can help people get that get those skills and, and help them um, develop uh, whatever it is they're trying to do to reach those, those customers um, virtually or, or uh, whatever. Um, and and uh, during, you know, one of the things we did early on in the summer is uh, we launched programs on how to create that basic online presence, you know, really instructional kind of things uh, to help people, you know, over, overcome those barriers. Uh, and at the same time, we were also, um, offering free classes on how to build a website and how to uh, analyze traffic on that website and, and how to think about um, online marketing um, strategically um, so that you're not just sort of broadcasting to like everybody, 
but really thinking about that that customer that you want that relationship with, right? And 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 how do I reach, you know, her? Where, where is she? And like what, you know, the, what? How do I um, how do I um, you know talk talk to to her and, and all of all of those kinds of things. So we're, I I think. Th- uh, from my perspective, those are like skills and things that uh, I want to continue to, you know, help uh, this community provide uh, throughout the the, uh, the rest of the pandemic and beyond that too. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you both for lending your perspective and sharing some of your expertise. Um, if you haven't already, please be sure to to pop your business and contact information into the chat. I will do the same. Um, But I think that at the end of the day, what we're talking about is a future economy that is relational, not transactional. One where I can show up for and support you um, because I know a little bit about who you are. Um, I think that kind of connectivity um, builds the kind of communities that we wanna be a part of. um, And those are communities in which small businesses thrive. Um, So if you are a business owner, um, please reach out to us. Uh, Let us know a little bit about who you are, your story, um, and especially as we head into the thick of the holidays. um, I think that it's more important than ever um, for all of you uh, to be represented. um, Because I think the wonderful thing that we've seen this year um, is that people want to show up for you, your community wants to support you. They just need to be able uh, to find you. And we are all here to make that easy so that we can all hopefully spend like it matters. Fantastic. I agree entirely that uh, like transition to a uh, relationship model from transactional is like, yeah, that's it. (laughs) All right, back over to you, John. Excellent. Thank you so much, Laura. And again, all of our panelists. Angela, let's uh, move on to our third lightning talk, funding in small business uh, mentoring. Let's see. Let's bring Angela back up. There you go. Wow. So I've been trying to keep that chat going, trying to capture, uh, go grab links and uh, as people are talking and put them in and uh, even grab um, statements that resonate with me. Everyone, feel free to do that. I really appreciated Laura's um, paced delivery, which is really important for our translators. Um, Right now, the interpreters are translating. And sometimes, I know I do, I go really fast. And of course, you're trying to pack a lot into a small period of time. But today, now we're going to move to our topic three, which is really resources. What's out there? What resources are available right now? We know um, we need way more than we have, but a lot of often it's about just making those connections like Laura was just speaking to. Um, So that's what this is about. The chat um, text will go out to all attendees after this event. The PDF of the of Mari's uh, graphic recording will be shared. We'll do it. We'll put it out there online. Not the t- not necessarily the text of our chat, but that's where the the rich stuff is, right? Um, so we hope in 2021. I'm making a pitch for 2021 right now. We we hope to continue these. Um, business resource open houses in the virtual space we have here and just to keep it going. So look for that. Um, Right now I wanna introduce Jennifer Tam. She is a um, small business advocate with the Office of Economic Development. And, um, And so this is really where the rubber hits the road what funding is available, what um, resources are available for small businesses today. Jennifer, go. All right, thank you, thank you. And thank you everyone. Um, I work for the Seattle Office of Economic Development. My role here is a food business advocate and um, our office in general, I'll say that we um, work with businesses and the business community at the individual level, um, at the neighborhood district level, um, at the industry level, at the workforce level, 
Um, we're a small um, but mighty team. And I would say at the heart of what we do um, is cultivating and building relationships and helping be that liaison for um, the business community on how to navigate um, the city and the different resources that are available um, in our community. And um, so my main role here at the office is to help people navigate through all the requirements and regulations um, when opening or expanding food businesses in the city. And I genuinely enjoy um, getting into all the nitty gritty details of permits and licenses. And um, uh, my background is I uh, come from the food world. I grew up in a restaurant. I actually came from um, uh, the Central Oregon, I grew up in the Central Oregon coast and uh, my family actually still has their business there. So 40 plus years um, going strong. And um, I just also just wanna thank you all to the resources that have uh, presented. So Laura, uh, especially the intentionalist, I had my own project that I did to help stay grounded during this time. I gratitude my own gratitude project and thanks to uh, the intentionalist, the gift card uh, program, I was able to help um, I was able to buy some gift certificates through that program um, and support some small businesses there while doing my own gratitude project. So it was just really awesome to be able to connect that way. So thank you, Laura, and the other um, resources that I've already presented too. So I want to just go through the resources that we have at OED and I'm going to share my screen here of the different resources that we have. All right. I think everyone can see that. Uh, not yet, Jennifer. Go ahead. And... Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to go through it quickly here. I know that we have some, um, I know that we have a uh, question and answer afterwards. So um, first we have a page here on resources and guidance for businesses and workers. This includes a, a plethora of different resources on for businesses, nonprofits, or SBA technical assistance. Um, so this is a place where you can kind of see the um, aggregation of the different resources available um, here at the city. And then uh, we also have here our small business handbook. So the handbook here is an aggregate, we're actually in process of updating it right now to include um, other resources that have not been included yet. And so uh, this is a handbook, an interactive handbook that includes all the different kinds of resources. Um, you can navigate it pretty easily by clicking on the different um, titles here. So for, we have all different kinds of resources in terms of um, how to navigate which business licenses you need like the state for instance has this online business licensing wizard that you can fill out and it allows you to uh, answer a few questions and then it pumps out a list of potential licenses and permits that you might need based on the type of business that you want to do so that's a resource that the state offers um, we have uh, different businesses or different resources here listed for um, the city and the county and the state in terms of the different kinds of resources available there uh, business technical assistance. So if I wanted to click on say OED, this will bring me down to this page here with all the different resources. And then you can click back up to the table of contents. So that's our small business handbook. Um, I, the, we, have, we just launched our small business stabilization fund and the, the small business stabilization fund it closes on the 30th. So I know that we're gonna have questions after this. So I um, will stop. Um, I won't talk too much about it now so we can answer more questions um, later, but we just launched it, $10,000 grants available for eligible small businesses and um, eligible nonprofits. We have uh, our, small, our SBA disaster loan technical assistance as part of this, um, born out of this pandemic, we actually created uh, the small business, the SBA loan technical assistance at our office. And we also have a resource call center that we've been able to figure out a way to uh, call all the different calls and um, questions that are coming into our office um, with uh, interpretation services. So we have both over the phone interpretation services as well as um, live in language and um, in select languages. We have our COVID-19 lease amendment toolkit so what this is, is a toolkit that provides um, templates on how to negotiate 
not negotiate, but how to understand, better understand your lease, um, your lease situation. So there is a lease amendment template. Um, there's a lease termination template. Um, there's a letter to the landlords. These are all templates and ways to help provide more clarity um, and communication to um, your landlord and just better understanding um, of your lease situation. In addition to this, what we're doing is we're also working, so we work with Communities Rise to put together this uh, toolkit and Communities Rise is also offering um, through the partnership, a 60 minute free legal assistance for small businesses that have been impacted by um, COVID-19. And this is what their page looks like. Um, this is Communities Rise page and um, you can click here to learn more about their info as well as sign up um, for the 60 minute uh, free legal assistance. We also have our location matters. Um, so what we have as part of this is uh, helping folks figure out how to find um, commercial space and then also understanding your commercial lease. So as part of this, uh, we have a location selection worksheet that you can download. It uh, helps you figure out uh, what kinds of questions to consider when looking at a brick and mortar space and um, you know what what things you might want to ask yourself what things you might want to ask um, a landlord or a contractor and then we also have this commercial lease checklist so what this checklist does is it allows you to understand um, the main provisions that you would see in a commercial lease and again, this was also in cre created in partnership with Communities Rise, so um, who works with uh, attorneys from all over the area to help provide legal services uh, for small businesses and nonprofits. And then we also have a resource through Seattle Public Utilities that um, our office is also partnered with in creating, um, and uh, that's called the EnviroStars uh, program. So what that does is it's a program that helps people businesses find um, ways to implement sustainable business practices into their business and find rebates for different ways uh, for conserving, um, for conservation. And then SPU also provides free uh, containers inside your business if you don't have them. So free containers meaning garbage, recycling, composting, and then we have our food business page. So our food business page, uh, this is the program that I manage at the office and I help um, people go through this page, go through all the nitty gritty details of this. Um, it was started off with brick and mortar restaurants and understanding the nitty gritty details there. And now it is uh, expanded to mobile food, catering, farmers markets and temporary events. And then uh, last, we have our life, life establishment handbook. So for those businesses who are wanting, uh, those folks who are wanting to uh, include nightlife into their business, um, this is a great handbook on navigating those nitty gritty details. And this is managed by um, our staff, uh, Scott Pluskwellick, who is our nightlife business advocate. So without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to um, Bob, uh, John, if you're able to unshare my uh, unshare my screen, and I'd like to turn this over to Bob Luciano and of the Rainier Valley Community Development Fund, and Ben Hahn from the Seattle Department of Transportation, on uh, the resources that you're offering for small businesses. So maybe Bob, we can start with you, and um, you can let us know what uh, what you're offering for small businesses and who might be your ideal small businesses that that you work with. All right. Uh, hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, Bob, let's see if we can get your camera on. There we go. I got Ben's camera on. All right. Are we good to go? For some reason, my I don't seem to have control. Here we go. All right. There we go. Great. Well, hello everyone. Again, my name is Bob Luciano. I'm with Rainier Valley Community Development Fund. I'm the um, Director of Community Outreach and Engagement, as well as um, one of the loan officers here. Um, thank you very much for all that great information, Jennifer. I've, I 
have the pleasure of working with Jennifer um, on several different projects um, over my four, probably going on four years here at the fund. I come out of a 24 year background in commercial banking, um, primarily with Bank of America. So um, a lot of experience uh, on the restaurant end of things because that was my one of my primary focuses of my portfolio. Um, a lot of the chain restaurants, higher end, um, so when I finally hung up the hat on the commercial banking, I was uh, thrilled to find this opportunity at the fund. Um, we, as I mentioned, we are a uh, community development fund. So as far as the ecosystem goes, um, as far as lending, um, as far as lending goes, we tend to um, serve that niche that's right under where banks would provide financing. So um, we're really out there trying to find those folks who, who have their, um, who are starting that process of starting a business or have an existing business, but can't quite make it through the financing process at a commercial bank. Um, and so we feel that we fulfill um, really a critical need, especially here in the neighborhood um, of providing that opportunity for folks where um, where they can't go to the regular commercial bank, but yet, you know, there are a lot of avenues out there um, in the realm of kind of what we would call hard money lending, a really high interest rate lending um, that can really oftentimes put a, a business in actually a worse position um, or set a business up to fail if they enter into an agreement or an arrangement that's just... Um, you know, really bad terms or very high interest, um, it can kind of sink a business right out of the gate. So, so we, we can come in, um, provide flexible financing of, at affordable rates. Um, and then we work with partners like Jennifer, uh, OED, um, our partners over at Urban Impact, maybe Ventures, um, to help plug businesses and clients into um, the technical assistance piece. So if there's uh, things that we can identify as we're looking through business plans, as we're speaking with the clients, um, if there's opportunities where a particular part of the business can be strengthened to help them be more successful going forward, whether it be lease negotiations as mentioned, um, maybe they need help on the bookkeeping end of things, uh, marketing, all these different areas, um, we've we can help them get get plugged into um, different partners that may be able to provide them um, that that information and that assistance to go ahead and strengthen them um, to strengthen their business. And really, it ends up being a win win for ev for everyone because obviously, if the business is getting the getting the help that they need from their extended we look at it as an extended team, um, they're gonna be more successful. Our likelihood of getting re repaid is, is more likely. Um, and they're hopefully getting a, a great product or great service out there to the community. Thank you so much, Bob. Um, that is, I think it's so important that businesses and, um, and we resource providers just know the different options, financing options that businesses have, um, like the Rainier Valley Community Development Fund. So thank you so much. And um, Ben and Casey, I'd love to turn it over to you. Esta, what, um, what are the resources that you're offering for small businesses and who are the ideal businesses that should be coming to you? Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Hahn. I'm with uh, the Department of Transportation Public Space Management Group. And overall, in general, our group looks at different programs and resources and ways we can activate public space within the city. Um, I just wanted just to kind of give a brief overview of several of the programs that we have um, available to small businesses, particularly food and retail businesses. Then I'll ask Kate, pass it off to Casey to um, go over some of these programs and I'll just wrap it off at the end. And so um, is the handout, is that going to be sure? Perfect. And so um, just again, just kind of giving an overview of our food retail priorities, pickup zones, our safe start permits, um, 
some information about a winter guidance and some other SDOT projects that could have a potential impact on your business. And so with that, I'll pass it off to Casey to um, dive deeper into, her, into what we have. Sure, thanks okay. Ben. Uh, I hear a little, do you guys hear me okay? Hold on one second. Okay, try again, Casey. Okay, testing. There you go. All right. <laughs> um, thanks, Ben. So uh, I'm Casey. I work with Ben um, in public space management uh, within SDOT. And our group works really on um, not a lot of direct, like vehicular transportation, um, if you will, but really activating our streets and sidewalks for kind of communities and business support. Um, and, you know, in the last, I guess now six, eight months, I think there's been uh, a lot of increase in interest in these programs. And so we've really been able to respond and we've actually kind of created a few new programs um, or I should almost say adapted some existing programs uh, that we already had. I'll go over these programs. Um, I don't want to give a lot of detail. There are certain criteria and guidelines that are associated with every opportunity. Um, and we're happy to talk about that uh, offline. Um, and there's lots of information on our website too. So I'll, um, I, should, I should share that. So um, you have all probably seen the food and retail priority pickup zones around the city. So any restaurant um, is eligible to get these. They're A-frame signs with kind of a food priority pickup logo on them, and it basically prioritizes the parking spaces in front of a restaurant um, for their customers that are getting to go food. Um, then we have what we're calling safe starts permits. Um, and that title is really just to align with this uh, governor's kind of safe start, safe start recovery program. Um, but un under that uh, program or that permit option, we have outdoor sidewalk cafes, um, something that we've always had, but uh, we've kind of relaxed some guidance um, for this specific opportunity. Um, you'll see a lot of businesses have actually been spilling out into the parking space, um, like the parallel parking space adjacent to their business. Um, and then merchandise displays. So that's really for retail businesses. Um, and they're, the footprint of that looks kind of like the restaurants that are in the curb space, but it's not tables and chairs with people eating. It might be racks of clothing or um, cart uh, books or um, people are getting kind of creative with um, how they use that. Vending, what we're referring to here is food trucks, food carts. Um, we have relaxed some restrictions around that program, um, which you know traditionally vendors wanted to locate in the kind of economic hubs, if you will, of the city, South Lake Union, downtown, um, and traffic is obviously dramatically lower in those neighborhoods right now. So um, vendors are really looking to kind of move out to the city and trying to identify where are those hotspots where people are actually congregating and and kind of the best opportunity for um, uh, customer base. Winter weather guidance, uh, this is something we just released. It's, um, you know, responding to, it's now November. We know the weather's not gonna be nice for the next six months, um, but businesses will be wanting to operate outside, um, especially considering the, uh, the most recent announcement, I think. Um, it's quite relevant um, and that includes heaters, umbrellas, um, and again, I have more detailed information about that. Stay healthy blocks and stay healthy streets. Um, hey, the, on, let me take it, let, yeah. let me take, sorry, Casey. <laughs> um, can we jump to the um, two slides, John? I'll wrap it up right now. I see your message. I just wanted to throw in a question that was put into chat, if you don't mind. No, I didn't see it. Just yep. the, you know, there's, uh, with, for businesses that aren't open, um, you know, there's see something that they are paying to have cleanings. Why must I pay to have good cleanings when I haven't been open? Uh, will the mm. city help job restaurant food people like caterers and school lunch providers? What programs do you have and what uh, relief do you have for those folks? 
Sorry. It, for no, that uh, the person who asked that question, are you referring to kind of, um, are you in a business improvement area where there might be sort of additional fees um, for those services? Maybe we can respond to this in the open house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when everybody's going to be, yeah. Too. All right, sorry about that. Yep. No, no, no that's no problem at all. And that's ben, a very yeah, good back, question. Back to Ben. Sorry. I Sorry. We, we should have rehearsed <laughs> this a little bit. <laughs> um, I just want to just also know about the food priority zones that OED yeah. has such an amazing in language service for their phone line and that they really have a great system of working with folks who who need in language support and answer questions about supporting their small business. And so I just want to give a huge shout out to Jennifer Kim and the OED team for that. Um, I also want to note that um, I, I'll provide a link in the chat afterwards, but we've updated our winter weather guidance guidelines around um, what businesses can do to have canopies or heaters outside as a part of their business, especially recognizing that indoor capacity has, is again severely re uh, restricted again. Um, but I also want to note that outside of your small business on a neighborhood level, uh, there's a lot of questions around our Stay Healthy Streets program which looks at making our neighborhood greenways that be closed to through traffic to have more space for people to walk and bike. Uh, if this is something that folks like to see permanent and that could have an impact on how people are walking, biking, skateboarding, rolling to your businesses in your neighborhood. And so that's something that we're looking for feedback as well. And I also wanted to note that we have our Stay Healthy Block program on a residential level that you can have uh, your own street closure on your residential street for families to have more space to walk and bike. And I was also given permission to say this, but um, this is actually before it's out in the news. And so um, you're hearing it first, everyone, but um, the Stay Healthy Block program was originally slated and on November 30th, but we got approved for, ex for an extension through the winter months through the end of February as well. And so um, again, that's more um, just kind of projects to keep in mind that can have an impact on how people are navigating to your business. And so with that, I'll pass it back to Jennifer. All right, thank you, Ben. And Casey, um, SDOT has been doing um, just amazing work in terms of adapting during this time, adapt, looking at their program to see how to improve the processes to make it easier for businesses. So thank you, um, SDOT team, for the work that you've been doing um, with the Safe Start permits and, um, and working with businesses. And with that, I will end our um, our lightning talk and open for any questions as we uh, move forward on this one. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, we're gonna open it for all people and questions. We're actually gonna bring all of our attendees up into the panel. Uh, but Angela, let's go ahead and uh, close, uh, close off today's program. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone. It's just, um, this is where we can come together. We can't do that in person. And so it's so valuable to me. Um, I am hoping that we can stick around for the next 30 minutes and where we will bring in attendees and then also look at some of the questions that didn't get answered. Uh, I wanna say, uh, I've been taking a look uh, here and there at what Mari is doing in her recording. And I'm wondering if we could get a, shout out from Mari right now and some of the, what she's been experiencing and what, what she's capturing there. Mari, Mari. If you can uh, pick up your camera and you can reverse and you can actually give us uh, just a one or two insights from your uh, beautiful, look at that business of food graphic. It's amazing, Mari. Yeah, we want, we want to see it, we do. We also want oh. to see your face. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Mara. Yeah, stay on camera here. And why don't you just give us an insight and then you can put it back onto your graphic yeah. recording. Absolutely. It's been such a gift to listen to you all today and the heart and the innovation. And it um, sounds like there's so many resources. So one thing I was struggling with was it's like, how do we capture all of these? So I really appreciate that Angela's been keeping track of those in the chat. And it seems what's emerging most is relationship and this sense of how we either crowdfund to support one another, how do we work together as communities to raise all of these small businesses um, and invest in one another. So 
I'm really excited to hear as a small business owner myself in a way to hear of these resources and what you all are doing. And I think we got this. So and thank you, Mari. Uh, everybody Absolutely. will get a copy of her work um, who has given their email. So again, another hit, um, another pitch to you know blow up this chat with your, make sure your most valuable link is in that chat. Uh, John, um, I think we're gonna bring everybody in now. Um, and is that is that what we're doing right now? I think we also have brought some of the Facebook live stream questions in to the chat. So once we open it up to everyone, I will make sure to look through some of that in our chat and bring it forward. Let's do this. Let's first thank our interpreters. Interpreters, please go ahead and thank our audience and please go ahead and turn on your cameras as soon as I see all three of your cameras. I will end the interpretation. So go ahead and please say, uh, say goodbye to our multilingual audience. Thank you very much. And again, we're going to end interpretation. But move, bring, come over to English Channel and, and say something to all of us. Excellent. So here we go. Uh, interpretation has ended. So again, thank you to all of our interpreters. Uh, and what we're going to do is... Uh, Again, thank all of you. We're going to now promote all of our attendees and go into a Q&A. And then, Angela, I don't know if you have a brief word about uh, next upcoming programs. Oh, one last piece before I go. Uh, for all attendees and panelists, if you want to save all the valuable links that are in here, just go to the chat window, hit the three dots, dot, dot, dot for more, and click Save Chat. Save Chat. If you don't know where it saved it, then click show in folder. It will open you exactly where it is. You will have all these valuable links. And, and Angela, there were a lot of links today. So will you tell us about our next programs while I come and bring our attendees in? And all of our panelists, feel free to turn on your cameras while Angela gives this last announcement. Also, just to follow up with John Chen about the chat, again, we'll, I, we will send that out to every all attendees and panelists. Um, in a e big email following up from this. I wanted to just um, acknowledge the work that's gone into the this first series, 2020 series. We've done three webinars um, and really exploring how to do the language in language translation. Um, what that really requires is uh, for many of our language groups um, cultural in Seattle's cultural communities, these resources are not connecting. How do we really bring that to the people that aren't um, having getting access? So limited English speaking business owners who may not have access to these virtual spaces. How do we do that outreach up front? That is what you call deep outreach. Well, we're trying to, um, to ex expand that and, um, and do that outreach in, in front of these virtual webinars that we'll, we're gonna try to do and launch in 2021. We'll try to do a quarterly webinar. We're doing fundraising for that right now and putting that together. This will be the same, it will be the same format, but with some um, advances, we will be able to do that quad language um, live stream and we will have YouTube, a YouTube channel um, with Seattle Public Library's Library to Business. Um, as a partner, we are working on these um, um, we call it morphing. We're morphing into this new space where we're going to be able to have the YouTube channel with all of the different webinars online. Even if there is a time limited resource like the stabilization fund is only open for two weeks, it's still um, a model of what can happen and what a city can do for small businesses. And it's something to strive for to, to relaunch another one. You know, we're, it, there are all many, so many pieces of this in at play. It's a very complicated process to work with government funding and what's going on in, you know, nationwide to our small neighborhoods. How do we make this linking? Um, 
Uh, perfect. So we're ready to wrap up. We're going to go to the Q&A. Everybody is here in the panelists. Uh, one thing we're going to do is, everyone, first, let's give all of our speakers and panelists, as well as our hosts, a huge round of applause. Here on Zoom, of course, we want to put your hands up and next to your head. This is uh, how you can do applause in sign language. Excellent. Thank you so much for everybody. And we're also now just everyone wave goodbye to our Facebook Live audience. Thank you. You should join us here in Zoom. You get the Q&A here. Uh, but thank you so much for the multiple people who have joined in. Uh, excellent. So we are off there. And Angela, I'm going to host you. And now I'm going to let you host the Q&A. Multiple questions in the chat, as well as if you are an attendee, feel free now to turn on your cameras and uh, ask questions. Uh, just signal Angela, and she'll try and get as many questions answered in the time available. There we go. Thank Back you, John. Thanks so much for producing this uh, complicated uh, webinar. It's a great format. I'm looking forward to 2021. And um, the chat, I think there's just a lot going on. Jay, you can help out with that too. I'm happy for um, questions to come in from any um, from any angle at this point. I think we did have um, something up front. Or raise your hand right now in the window if you have a question that isn't in the chat that you'd like to bring forward. Um, I did have one that we didn't respond to that was to Casey and Ben, we can jump to at whatever point. Laura, look, looks like Laura has something, go for it. Um, so I talk to a lot of business owners as I'm sure we all do. And one of the things that folks have mentioned is just the expense associated, especially with trying to set up outdoor space or you know, shelters, heating, et cetera. And something that really I think could be helpful would be if uh, the city uh, or someone simple, similar might be able to help facilitate, facilitate, excuse me, um, bulk purchase of some of these pricier items. So whether it's a heater or whether it's tenting or whether it's, um, I don't know, fencing, um, you know, some of the, I guess, ingredients uh, for setting up and or sustaining these spaces. Um, again, they're super expensive. Um, I think that, you know, businesses don't have a lot of extra cash on hand, right. but I imagine that if somebody could help identify a supplier, maybe a local uh, POC owned business supplier um, and, and do some kind of a, a bulk arrangement in order to be able to offer a discounted price to small businesses. Um, I think that would be uh, super helpful. Who who would we talk to about that? Uh, Laura, I'll jump in. Um, I actually have a meeting. Um, it comes from one of our Good Food Resilience uh, sessions that I didn't mention, but we did a listening session of restaurants around their needs um, at the end of October. And we've set up following up meeting, a follow up meeting, sorry, um, with legislators at pretty much every level from city to federal. And um, in, I'm going to jump off here in about 15 minutes because I have a meeting at 11 actually with um, uh, folks from four of the city council um, offices uh, and funding for um, to help with outdoor um, uh, uh, um, amendments, changes these um, kind of uh, alternate um, structures is on our list. And I think that the, the, bulk, um, the bulk purchase is a great, um, is one of the great solutions. I think we saw that with PPE, uh, where a number of our local um, manufacturers were able to, you know, turn on, um, pivot and kind of create those. And the city was able to negotiate, um, you know, a, a grid, bulk purchase wholesale price. I'd be interested maybe to know from Jennifer and, and the folks at SDOT whether you know of any plans currently to help with funding assistance or um, bulk purchasing, like Laura said, um, already for these outdoor structures. Um, Jennifer, I, I, um, I know that there's discussion around it and there's interest. I don't know that the money is secured or if it really could be an option. Jennifer, do you know anything else about that? I, um, I completely yeah. understand it's a it's an issue, but. Yeah, um, there are um, there are discussions happening around um, additional financing 
or additional funding that could potentially be available, but nothing has been set in stone. Um, but this is something. This is this is something that has um, that has sprung up as a need for for businesses, not just on outdoor, actually, also on um, packaging as well, because to go is so huge right now that there's a shortage of um, of containers, and also as businesses are yeah. pivoting. Um, or adapting to this, you know, you're not going to be buying thousands, thousands of to-go to -go containers right now. You're going to be looking at hundreds. So um, the bulk buy discussion in general is um, happening in different realms, but there's no funding that has been secured at this point um, for either of those options. But um, certainly once we know more, we'd let folks know. Jennifer, I we would... should hit up mommy at SPU about... Uh supporting compostable packaging bulk buys. You know what, you're right You're right on target, Laura, because actually um, uh, we have been talking to SPU. This has been a really hard nut to crack, um, partly because um, there's just so many different variables at play and how do we make it equitable and fair and make sure that there's the, we have the right containers, we have it's gonna be the right pricing for businesses. So um, there's a lot of different variables at play but certainly yes you're right you're right on track with SPU there and um, we are having discussions on, on what this might on what something like this could potentially look like I would also add to um, oftentimes at least for the resources that we had asked not mentioned the other big cost that's often associated is um, traffic control and so making sure that whatever changes we make to the street is safe for people who are driving down that street and for folks who may be sitting outside on the street on a sidewalk cafe or something. And so um, that's a funding resource that I could potentially help out with. And so um, I don't know if contact information is being shared out, but I'll type my email and phone number here in the chat again. And if there are any small businesses that are interested in doing any sort of um, outdoor seating arrangement or um, any sort of extension of their business onto the street, they can reach out to myself or Casey um, or our public space um, email. And um, I'm more than happy to see what I can do. And um, more often than not, I, th I'm, I think I can provide some support in that capacity. In your, when you chat, my also include um, that statement, like for, the people who are interested in X, please contact me at X, so that when the chat is shared out, that will also that context will also be there. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll use full sentences. <laughs> I will have just one more thing. I I had seen something about bulk tent buying and just this idea of kind of a reduced cost when buying bulk. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, if you have contacts, please feel free to forward them. I don't know, city purchasing is, there's a very specific system with that. So I don't know that it could be an option, but I appreciate the suggestion and I, um, it's, I think it's worth exploring. And I just wanna throw in on that. What about the CBOs, the work that we're doing? You know, we, um, it's some, for instance, Beacon Business Alliance is a nonprofit and we have a yeah. sponsorship program. So we're able to um, go out for grants and or support, fiscal sponsor other mm. based projects. So something like that, could we could look at, at helping with that. So that's where the organization, um, you know, there is pretty much across Seattle, there's a city community-based organization trying to stay, stay afloat and keep in the, doing the work on the ground with the businesses. Um, so that partnership with the city um, and the other um, service organizations and with the businesses, that's this, this intersectional point that should be utilized and thought of when, when those opportunities arise. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, so I'm curious, you know, we had three topics. We went through the pivot topic, a um, lot packed in each one, and also digital access is um, one of our big focuses and particularly around what we're doing with the going to the marketplace, I put something in chat about that platform 
um, I just wanted to touch on any of those um, those areas that may not have gotten enough lift. Um, you know, I know we have business owners here. We have, um, I mean, one of the things I was curious about is um, whether we um, whether we talked enough about e-commerce and um, how that is helping businesses. Is that a um, like intentionalist? And then what we're trying to do again with the the Southeast Seattle marketplace, working with the shop local um, network. And are those are those is there a saturation point, or is it really um, yet to be tapped? Um, and I was curious because Shelton, you have. Um, what I understand is that you have that skill set in tech, but um, but your business is where you put your focus. So how do you have anything that you can share um, relevant right now around around that you know digital space? How are we succeeding? How are we failing? What are the opportunities? Um. I guess one of the things I would say, I know, in, I know in the IT, I know in the IT world, uh, typically, usually when it comes to resources, I know someone mentioned a YouTube channel, but usually when it comes to resources, usually we have like, like you said, this one centralized location, you know, where all this information that we're talking about can be accessed. Um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, it's almost like a, it's almost like a blog in a way. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not called a blog. Oh, SharePoint, SharePoint, like a SharePoint site, you know, and, and, and the SharePoint site, you know, it's just an easy link that can be, you know, distributed to whoever and, and with given the proper access, they can access this, you know, pool of information that we could all benefit from, I'm sure. I guess it's pretty much what I have at the time. Thanks for that. I hadn't heard that uh, phrase or that concept yet. I'll look into it, put it in the chat so that I can come back to it later. <laughs> Anybody have anything on this topic or want to bring something else up? We are at 1040 right now. So we do have some time to dig into it, go deep on something that we haven't really touched on. Really, it's about again connection over content, but it, I don't know um, if we have many questions in the chat that haven't been touched on, and so I'm going to go right now and do some research there. So take it away. Who's got something to bring? Um, I'll add for the stabilization fund that if folks, I know that there was a question in the beginning, um, Angela, that you had brought up in terms of someone's. I think it was Angela, um, in terms of someone having an issue with uh, the online form. So if folks are having issues with online forms, you can call our, um, our main line, which is 206-684-8090. Um, you'll leave a message there, and then one of, our, uh, one of us on the resource team will call you and uh, work with you on the application. So that also means... Um, helping people through the entire online application if that's needed. Can you say that phone number again? 206-684-8090. Yeah, it's just, it's our main office line. So if folks are having issues with um, filling out the application online because it's not popping up for whatever reason or whatever it might be, then you can call our office and, um, and we can help you uh, through that process. And that's for any of the applications, for instance, what about PPP, SBA? Uh, so we're not gonna, we wouldn't fill out the entire application for PPP, SBA, that's, a, that's the SBA. We'd be able to help guide you to resources to be able to do that, but that's a much more extensive application process. Um, I'm talking about the Small Business Stabilization Fund application. Okay, thank you. I just want to add on to that too. Like um, when we're talking about when, you know, I hope folks are leaving here with a sense of, you know, just how many different organizations will help, you know, during this time and always, you know, and, and look at the amazing 
expertise that we have on the screen right now. Um, and, you know, in that, in that spirit of, you know, relationships, um, I just want to encourage folks that if, if you don't know where to turn, reach out to one of us. And we have, you know, the, the ecosystem of support, there's a, there's, a, there's a no wrong door policy, you know, where like if, 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 uh, if you should be talking to Casey, I'm going to refer you out to Casey if you call, call, call me. If you refer to Jennifer, she might refer to me for market research. So just reach out to one of us and we'll help you find those other, you know, other folks so, um, that, that can help. I also wanted to add too. this is to Logan's um, question um, up above in terms of um, gloves and as part of P as part of PPE um, uh, purchases uh, King County is actually they have this star program um, where they are um, helping try to distribute different PPE equipment that includes masks and gloves. Um, and some other sort of PPE essential items. And so that would be, um, that would be a really good program to look into in terms of um, looking for PPE equipment because they are doing um, uh, bulk orders. Jennifer, can you tell me the, the link or put that link in um, the chat? Yes, I will put the link in the chat. All right, well, the, um, let's see, where am I looking now? I'm trying to look for Mari's screen um, so that I can see what's going on. Mari, oh, don't see it happening here, but the, um, one of the, I think for me anyway, having the um, graphic recording process going on while we are talking is an all an, an added capture of obviously of what of of what we're um talking about and i and i'm trying to put stuff into chat that i hear that really resonates um you know and back to jay what jay was talking about spirit of relationships um in the ecosystem of support here in these we may not be visible to everyone um and because of the whatever phase we're in right now actually entering back down into a more strict phase it's ever it's even more important that we're um, in front of people and getting connected so the calls that we're making over the next two weeks um and by we, I know a lot of people across Seattle are doing outreach, Office of Economic Development, the Department of Neighborhoods Community Liaisons are actively doing outreach and we are trying to refine our um, protocol for making sure we're talking to each other and so that people don't fall through the cracks and we know who we're reaching and who we've not reached. So this is just a complicated thing. Um, but if you don't know that that's going on, then, um, or you don't know that, that we are accessible to you, then that's a problem. So um, everything that Laura Kleis is doing with Intentionalist needs to be connected in to what I'm doing when I talk to somebody and they have a product, they can't seem to get out there, but that might be an income stream for them that'll help them survive. So I need to know about that. And I need to be able to um, bring it out of my, not my toolkit, but you know, my um, link, my network kit so that I can share that then at that time, um, every moment, that I have with a business owner who's struggling is an opportunity to share that stuff. So um, I just hope we all come away with that in our heads. Um, you may be working, like I, I know somebody's here right now, Darby Ducombe hasn't said anything today, but Darby I know is accessible and ready to help with negotiating um, tenant leases skill set is strong in that area and we've been working together to um to to do some of that support to bring some of that support so um i don't know darby if you wanted to say anything 
Go um, yeah. It. Yeah. So, so um, my husband and I are mediators and I also do a lot of real estate uh, work, commercial real estate work. And so we're volunteering in uh, Seattle, in particular in Southeast Seattle, trying to support small businesses down there who are maybe struggling with a landlord issue or nervous about talking to their landlord or just need help figuring out the regulatory environment. Um, it really just sort of depends. And if you, you know, you, you can reach out to me or Angela or any number of folks down there know how to get a hold of us. We are happy to help volunteer, you know, make sure people who are, you know, struggling with those sorts of topics or getting the support they need to get, get getting, um, you know, coach in the direction they need to go to get their, um, get those issues ironed out, that sort of thing. Sure. And of course, the Office of Economic Development and Seattle Public Libraries, Libraries to Business has um, clinic one-to-one -one resources in the same area. And I just want to call out Darby, down there means Southeast Seattle. Yes. Is that what you mean? Well, yeah. let me just say, we are not down under, we are part of Seattle and we are um, um, maybe there are neighborhoods in Southeast Seattle that are underserved or have lack of rec representation and those connections are being made and Darby was just referring to, to some of the work we're doing. Without language support, Darby's not going to be able to get in there and do, and, and do her thing. Yeah. So, through the CBOs and through the Department of Neighborhoods Liaison pro Program, we're able to do that work. So, you know, not one person can solve the puzzle. It has to be a we. And that's who, where we are right now. We're in this, in this we together. I really appreciate um, your time today and knowing that it's, um, I'm just doing a time check. Um, at 1049, we're going till 11. Um, if, if anyone has to jump off, let raise your hand and, and let me know if you have something to bring to this conversation right now before you go. Um, the Mariah just put something in. Um, do you want to speak what you put into chat yourself, Mariah? Sure. I was just uh, lifting up uh, Laura's point about, um, you know, especially as we head into the holiday season you know, uh, of course, spending it like it matters. The, um, the Intentionalist uh, gift card marketplace is um, a really great resource. I also put the Seattle, um, the restaurants at home map in there as well. After Seattle restaurant week ends, um, we are gonna continue with the Give a Meal campaign. So um, that's helping those community kitchens um, continue with their work. Um, and uh, yeah, just to also think about um, various restaurants for both holiday meals, but also for experiences, cooking classes. Um, there's a lot that they're offering that can be the gifts that you would be providing um, otherwise. So just think about, you know, the businesses that are out there and how we can, you know, help support them. I wanted to follow up on that, Mariah, with just a concept that I, uh, where I met you, Mariah, was in, um, the University of Washington studio on uh, food access over the summer. And this was um, with an organization called New Impact, working with the University of Washington group. I don't actually remember the name of that studio, but um, trying to, in a tri-sector approach, community, public, and private, is the tri-sector, pulling together um, the think tank uh, in, in a think tank environment, how can we um, stand up programs that will support in this environment, in the pandemic environment? And one of the ideas that I thought was really great, didn't get any funding, was the with along the lines of the community kitchen uh, model, um, f getting funding, bringing funding to get fresh food from the farms, local farms, um, in, in a CSA model, but bringing those, that into restaurants and bringing a, a, and paying chefs to put those, that food, that fresh food into um, that, into food for community. 
Oh, um, and I don't, you know, I just know the top level of it, but that's the innovation that's being think, thought about and hopefully funded. And some of that's happening in California right now. I can't remember the name of the program. Mariah, maybe you can bring that um, in, but, you know, without pressure and funding, those, none of those things happen. So, you know, think, let's keep that um, wide scope thinking happening. And we need to, you know, we need to come together and push for this kind of thing. Mariah, do you know the, the um, any of the stuff I couldn't name? <laughs> I was just gonna say, I put the our, uh, link to our Good Food Resilient series in the chat as well. Um, we actually covered that in one of our last sessions last week, um, and there's a link to the video. So if any of you wanna kind of watch that, there is some really amazing innovative work uh, being done, including Southeast Seattle with plant-based food share um, and helping distribute those um, fresh foods. There are CSAs running out of restaurants. You can find that on the restaurants at home map, but I'd encourage you to um, check out the video because there are lots of um, programs um, that are kind of making those connections here locally. So could a, could a restaurant that's interested in, in adopting some of that come and get involved? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd uh, probably just need to find who, who was um, you know, who was doing that. And most people have made themselves pretty available for collaboration. I think that's the biggest key we saw to this whole um, event today was that collaboration is, is relationship building, partnership building and collaboration is the way we um, really come through this. And, and that's the best way to do that is just reach out and say, hey, I have an idea. How can we work Bob, together? Thank you, Mariah. Bob Luciano, um, as a community-based funder in Southeast Seattle, um, how would you bring um, resources to uh, a restaurant that wanted to, um, that needed support in standing up something like this? Um, it, it, that's an interesting one. Um, you know, in the end, we are, you know, we are a, we're our, our cash flow lender. So we need to, we need to be able to demonstrate that if we're lending money, if, if we're doing it on the financing side, that, that we'll get re, repayment back. Now, at, at the same time, um, we are constantly out um, talking to partners, uh, such as some of the major corporations, banks, things of that nature to, uh, to apply for grants. And, um, you know, we have one pending right now. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed uh, to, to hear back on this next funding round. And now if something like that was to come about and we had um, we had a chunk of grant funding, that's certainly something that we could use to entertain, um, you know, an idea like that to go ahead and fund, um, fund something. And then depending on the size, the size of the request, we do, um, we do occasionally, you know, we will reach out and support, um, you know, in individual endeavors, just from a from a you know a business standpoint, a, like a grant standpoint, we supported the uh, Melissa Miranda's um, endeavor up on Beacon Hill, Christy Brown's uh, with just direct grants. So certainly some certainly something we can always talk about. I just have to show off my shirt. Yep. All right. So wonderful clients. <laughs> um, thank you, Bob. Um, I know that um, there are, we're, we're wrapping it now, I think, ladies and gentlemen. We're not live streaming anymore, so the pressure's off, right? Um, if there's anything, <laughs> if there's anything else um, people want to bring, uh, and I'm looking also at Mari's screen. It's, it's kind of, it's, I'm so excited to look at it closely. Um, Anybody else have anything to, to bring in? Uh, I want to bring one thing up. Um, so Laura, I uh, want to share a little bit, like we work with the Department of Neighborhoods. We are the community liaison, both Levine and Elise, uh, where well, we work with different language um, communities and I work with the Chinese community. So when you mentioned pink dumplings in Chinatown ID, I could support that uh, through the partnership with OED and DON. Um, 
so that's why I, I, I could say, oh, I, I can take it up. So if you come across with other businesses um, that need language support, you definitely can check in with a DON or OED and they will find us or find appropriate folks to um, support the businesses uh, whenever it's a language support or other sort of support, uh, we, can, we can do that. Um, so Elise is Spanish and, and Levine's Vietnamese. And you, there are liaisons that support, um, how many languages do you have support for right now? I think a lot, uh, yeah. a lot of languages. Yeah, Ben would know, I work with Ben long time back in Chinatown ID. I work with Casey as well uh, for other open street program. Um, so we've been here for a long time and uh, share across the whole Seattle and hopefully to support more people throughout this time. African diaspora, also multiple of the yeah, Somali, Tigrina, all of them uh, uh, that you can name <laughs> their people to support that Tagalog uh, uh, a lot, yeah. Also to call out the relationship between Department of Neighborhoods and Office of Economic Development in funding that supports the community-based organizations across Seattle to have a direct relationship and work with um, the liaisons, I've mentioned that a little bit, but officially to say that um, we, we are currently trying to improve our um, the accessibility uh, of peace and um, making sure that we can streamline our work and, um, and reach people that need to be reached. Um, yeah, I would like to say something about um, the meeting that we have, I think is very nice. And also that because I work for uh, the Vietnamese community and also the Asian community uh, as well. Uh, I think because the cultures, because the language bear, um, we do the outreach a lot to our community. And I see that they wanted to see one-on-one. Um, uh, -on -one. That means uh, not to because I speak Vietnamese, but if I walk into the business, I know them and they trust me and they tell me what do they need. I know a lot of business out there in NICAP. We are here uh, ready for them to support them. And then, but I want them to be on here as well, but I don't see many of them. I really wish that we can find another way that we can do direct support. Uh, somebody can able to speak their language um, and understand and build the trust. And they can open it up because so many of them that they thinking to close the business and we don't want to see that. Thank you, Living. Mm -hmm. Edis, do you have some something to bring to at the end of this? We're doing our closing, I think. And what's your thought of how of the work in general, but also of what we're trying to do with these webinars? See, I think that the flyer you already create out there, you can have the contract with the CEO or um, neighborhood house, you know. So we we uh, we are here to 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 work with you to support the business because this is this, everything is about community, about the local community, about the local business. We don't want they going away. We wanted to, I'm so excited as you mentioned about that, uh, like Selton mentioned about by in March, you already put it online and you already pack it up and safety and ready to send it out. And I see a lot of people, they wanted to enjoy that special look heat. They don't want it to, they all want to eat out. And right now they have to stay home. So everything is ready. Everything is ready just because how we send a message to the business owner and let them change the way, learn how to do that. See the way it's not for right now and also in the future. You know, the Thank sample you. for them to look at Amazon, for example. This is something that we need to make change. Excellent. Well, we are at the end. Iris, do you have something to bring? Yes, just, you know, just some closing thoughts is um, um, I really appreciate the work that all of you are doing. Um, I think it's very complex situation, right? And we are 
really accommodating ourselves to the situation and just being um, very intentional in terms of listening to the needs of the community and particularly those who have been impacted uh, the most. Um, I work a lot with, you know, every, every um, community has their own challenges and I work with the Latino Spanish speaking communities. And you know, one of the challenges that we face is um, legal status and that limits our opportunities, you know, on top of language barriers and cultural barriers. Um, so I think that sometimes um, at the institutional level, we're gonna find uh, challenges because institutions are Bill to just listen to, to certain populations. And I think it's really good to see the work that is happening at the grassroots level and community level. And I really appreciate everything that you said and everything and all the resources that you shared. Um, and I really appreciate, um, Laura, your emphasis on relationality. Um, and it's complex, right? Because we're trying, to, we're using these platforms that have a wide reach and, and at the same time we are coming back to realizing that um, community relations are super important and working at the local level is super important and getting to know each other at the personal level is just so important so it's if one good thing that I could say that COVID-19 is showing us is that we really need to invest this not only right now right but really you know, what Laura said, like really changing um, our ways of relating to one another from transactional to more relational. And I appreciate that just in general, I appreciate your work, everybody also, you know, the tech work, the tech support, um, everybody, thank you. I hope I get to see you in person <laughs> soon. With that, we're gonna wrap this webinar. Everybody, let's just do a, sh take off your mute and do a shout out to the community. Um, we will put this recording up live. One, two, three. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Thanks, guys.